First up is Scorch Gorge. The original layout has a lot of problems being very limited entrance routes, the spawn area being relatively weak, and a lack of routes to move around the stage. And so, introducing Scorch Gorge 2.0. There are a lot of changes here, so let's get started. The spawn region is going to be extended a bit to the left, and the left defending side is going to be extended slightly, making it easier to hold these areas and making them less susceptible to bombs. It'll also have a slightly extended grading platform and a rail to be able to poke bombs more easily along the main choke. As well as a route underneath. Since this area is still going to be the main point of contention for the map, I wanted to give more options. On the right side of the stage, the spawn area is extended drastically, with a great platform and making it way easier to retake the right side, but on top of that, it also allows you to drop into the flank from spawn, making it much safer. However, the main change is that the walls on the flank, both on the bottom left and the top right, will both be inkable, allowing you to go around the middle of the stage and giving a new option for teams to push. The final thing to note is that the tower in mid and the grating are going to be similar to their layout on clan blitz and a bit of extra ground was added on the defensive snipe that allows mid-range weapons to poke top mid a bit more easily though being at high risk this layout might not be as open or easy to get out of spawn as the beta but it provides significantly more options hello thanks for having me on up next is eel tail alley in this gameplay trailer we could clearly see just how much more open it was back in the day it's baffling to how much was taken away in the final game so our rework will focus on restoring it to this version without changing it too much from how it currently is. This stage suffers from being very tight. The bridge is a good lockout and the map can feel difficult to move on at times. So what it needs is to open up the sides a bit more and make it easier to move in general. There's not much change in the spawn region for Eeltail's rework. The grate on the left was extended to make this defensive jump now possible, and the right side roof was widened just a bit. The biggest changes to this map were all in the middle. The bridge is now approachable from the top right side and the left side with this ink wall, and the barrier walls to the stage were widened just a little bit, not only just to make the area bigger, but to also add routes around these two side platforms that used to just touch the wall. On top of that, in all modes besides flat zones, the bridge will be in the variation where it's dropped, allowing access from the middle of the map, making it easier to retain control over. In splat zones, however, the bridge will now keep its turf war variant, but now with walls on the sides similar to the dropped variant. The tower control route would be slightly changed in the mid to compensate for the change bridge. The bridge is still the focal point, however making the stage wider along with adding more consistent waves to attack the bridge will make the stage flow a lot better. Hagglefish doesn't need as many changes compared to the others, as it already does have two side routes, they just aren't as good as they should be, and so with this rework we're going to make them just a little bit better. Pretty simple, the sides are going to be a bit more similar to their layout and tower control with you being able to easily walk through the left and right side, but it'll now feature the block there that's in zones, allowing a lot more cover there. The sides have been widened just a little bit, and it'll be a bit easier to approach on both sides rather than requiring an awkward jump on one of them. On top of that, the wall next to the lowest part of the uninkable in mid will be climbable, but will require a squid surge to get up there, allowing a bit of a situational way to get into mid and opening up those options more. For some extra stuff, there's a bit of extended cover on the left side to make it a bit easier to retake that part of the map on tower control, and on the right side there'll be more sponges added so you can drop and go on the right flank without it being a one-way or a very slow retreat path. Undertow requires the least amount of changes, as the only real problem is that everyone is funneled into this very tight mid with no alternate routes, while the areas outside of that are actually really good. So there you go flanks. We decided on uninkable glass to make them easier to react to because of how quick these flanks are, and that paired with the giant glass that already exists, we believe it would be pretty fair for backlines to see coming, and since this opens it up on both sides, it drastically increases the amount of options. It is genuinely insane how just one small change can make a bad stage instantly good. Finally is the worst of the Splatoon 3 stages we've gotten so far, which is Mincemeat Metalworks. A lot of work needs to be done for this stage, but I think I'm pretty happy with what I came up with that requires the most minimal amount of changes. There's a good bit to talk about for this one. The spawn region has been extended slightly on the left side to make that choke point a bit easier to defend on on Rainmaker and Tower Control, and on top of that, a lot of routes are going to be opened up. This ramp and blocks are going to be there consistently on every mode. The top right side of your spawn will also allow you to drop more easily, and the grade path there has been shortened to make it a bit easier to move through for attackers and defenders, as well as the right side of your plat being extended and adding a little bit of cover. 
driver. The most important change though is in mid. On the right side of your car, that wall that's normally uninkable will be inkable. And because we've extended that plat area a bit, if an attacker jumps there, they'll be able to move to their left side to be able to take a bit more of an angle. This opens up the stage drastically in mid and creates more push and flanking options, while the extended defending options allow it to be much easier for defenders to retake, making the map significantly more back and forth. Grindwater is up next. A pretty small map that will be keeping pretty small, just making the flanks better. First off, a pretty major spawn expansion because it's pretty hard to get out of sometimes in this map, especially from the right side, where the wall will no longer extend all the way, making it an actually useful spot. The drop will still be easily displaceable by bombs, but longer range weapons won't have to drop there anymore, and can use the snipe as an actual snipe. As for the flank, the rail will be there like it is in Clan Blitz because it's too good not to be included in every mode, along with a whole lower area getting a small expansion. This ramp will also no longer require a jump to get up, making it a faster and more reliable route. On top of that, both walls near the flank, both to get to the enemy base and to climb up to mid, will be inkable, making it much easier to traverse. The mid area is largely unchanged. Brinewater just needs that right defensive route to be a better defensive route and the flank to be a better flank, which gives many more options for both sides. Also, we can't forget the tower control path will be slightly changed, lingering in this area longer instead of going straight to the opponent's spawn, because this area is just not good to fight in, and the Rainmaker checkpoint was moved up, because why is it so close to mid? For Hammerhead Bridge, I'm not going to be bringing back the graded bridge from Splatoon 1, as I believe that falls under a rework that's too drastic since in lore the bridge is now completed. So instead, Instead, we're going to have to try to improve the stage how it is now. Funny enough though, most of these changes also come from Splatoon 1. The right side extension not only allows defenders an extra route out of spawn, but attackers a way to get up to the defending plat. There's a rail added in spawn, and finally, the walls that are added in mid as well as the extended plats are also from Splatoon 1, just rotated to provide a bit more cover from chargers. And this left wall will now be inkable, making it a two-way entrance, which both adds a flank for attackers and for defenders allows you to drop without instantly being cornered. Finally, it's worth noting this map is going to have a specific change for Rainmaker, where the checkpoints will be moved to be on the left and right side here. This creates two routes before they converge and keeps the checkpoint from being, well, way too close to mid. I think this stage actually ended up in a really cool hybrid between the Splatoon 1 and Splatoon 3 layouts that makes it feel like an actual completed version of Hammerhead Bridge. Museum honestly wasn't butchered that badly anyway, so I don't have too many changes here. The left side of the spawn area is going to be extended slightly to to make it a bit easier to defend there on tower control, but the only major changes is that we're going to have the flank added back from Splatoon 1. This also includes the little wooden area underneath plat that you can use if you fail the direct jump. This opens up the stage drastically on retake since now going far left side altogether doesn't lock you in a corner and it makes it easier for attackers to push in via the added route. On Rainmaker, the checkpoint was moved back. The new route, while fast, requires you to move backward to climb a wall, jump, and then climb another wall, making it the most vulnerable Rainmaker path that's also the easiest for opponents to counter push if they stop you. Because of that, I believe it's fine to leave it in in this mode. The only other mode specific change is that the tower path will be modified slightly since the spinner is now blocking it from going straight forward. Mahi is definitely our personal favorite of all of these reworks. I am so sorry to all those who never played Splatoon 1 and this is your first ever time playing on the stage. Similar to Hammerhead Bridge, they completely gutted this map. Here's the original, and here's the brand new layout. Spawn was completely overhauled, now resembling an improved version of the Splatoon 1 version, with this whole area being unavailable to attackers, to allow defenders to retake the area more easily instead of being trapped almost instantly. The Splatoon 1 flank to defending snipe was also re-added, which adds a much needed extra approach option. The mid area had an expansion towards the islands like the original stage, while the islands themselves were restored, albeit just a bit more Simplified. These two changes combined allow for the islands to act as viable approach options, and even allow you to use them to completely navigate around mid. This layout is a slight variation of one from my own channel I made a couple months back. So go check that out if you want to see more variations of Mahi Mahi. The tower path will go back to its Splatoon 1 route, except for that bit where it goes over water, and the water will still drop at the second checkpoint, while in Rainmaker the checkpoints will be spread out more evenly to also make the islands more useful, and of course will still trigger the water to drop. And and finally, the clan blitz baskets would be right here, giving reason for the islands to exist. See a pattern here? This is just 
another instance of what we believe is the perfect mixture of the Splatoon 3 version with everything that made the Splatoon 1 version work. And it still manages to simplify things without taking away all the options. Flounder, of course, is one of the least butchered maps going to Splatoon 3, and already includes the spawn improvements that it needed. We have very few changes here. The right side, instead of having that pipe and uninkable wall, will now have it gone so you can climb up it. Though unlike the Splatoon 1 version, this wall will still be blocked off. The low ground will be added back, with the tree returning in a slightly different place. This will add just a few more options. Plus, you know, it's a tree. It looks nice. And instead of this tunnel out of snipe that used to be very far back and give many options from spawn, it will now be brought back connected to your snipe and be a much simpler drop, just to get a little further to the right side. Again, not a stage that really needed a lot of changes, but a little bit of extra paths to the right just opens it up a little bit more. Inkblot Art Academy. A bit of a pain because of Rainmaker, but uh, we'll get to that Piranha Pit layout later. Anyway, first off is just going to be some small, simple changes. The layout takes most inspiration from tower control with a few notable changes. There will be glass added by the area to the rail, and that whole wall, both the front and the left side of it, will be inkable to make it much more easy to approach. There will also be a defending sponge added to the flanks to make them significantly less committal and much easier to use. Finally, since we made the attacking options way easier on the main choke point, the defending area will also have its spawn slightly extended to make it easier to defend. Splat Zone's only change is it will now feature the middle block there, like it normally does in that mode. And that just leaves Rainmaker. Extremely impossible to rework without drastically changing it due to just being one path, and so, uh... This is what we came up with. The entire layout's pretty much the same as the Tower and Clam Blitz ones that I talked about further, but now the spawn area has been extended further backward, and there's a new uninkable ramp added past the second checkpoint of the tower, near that main choke I mentioned previously. Basically, it's gonna be made a bit more vertical. Checkpoint 1 will be moved back, and an accompanying checkpoint will be on the right side, and now you can push through the left side, eventually going up that new uninkable ramp, or on the right side, which while further, will now feature the ramp being inkable, making it a bit easier. With the goal residing close to the enemy spawn, but with enough distance to be reasonable. Inkplot Rainmaker was something I thought we would just have to ignore entirely, but I think these changes are just realistic enough to where it might happen, especially considering Splatoon 2 Piranha Pit is a thing. Sturgeon's another map with a pretty good start. Mainly, the right route out of spawn is pretty good, and there's a decent amount of options, so it only needs a few fixes. And here it is. It's pretty much all on the left side of the map, with this grading platform extended, along with this whole lower area. This not only makes the already good right side route better by allowing easier access behind enemies, but it makes the admittedly pretty bad left option way easier to approach on, without having to climb the wall and instantly get surrounded. This block from the second game, which was mysteriously absent in Splatoon 3, has also been re-added. Rainmaker will have one specific mode change, being the return of the attacking sponge from Splatoon 2. This allowed you to easily switch between between push options, and we have no idea why they took it out. Finally, the clan blitz layout was pretty bad since you were able to score from the snipe area, so Chara wanted to change it quite drastically. The clan basket will now be over here, just a little bit to the left of where the tower goal usually is. To make up for this, the attackers can now use the left flank like the cannon Rainmaker, and the right wall next to the basket will all be inkable now, allowing you to push slightly ahead of it. That being said, the defending spawn is a lot more locked off in this mode, to make it easier to defend against these variety of approach options, which can be difficult to hold on to with the basket in the corner, and we believe that change would make it feel a lot better. For Mako Mart, I pulled some inspiration from the Splatoon 1 Flounder route I mentioned previously. Remember how Spawn had a tunnel that dropped you off in a bit of a two-way? That same tunnel is now there in Mako Mart. It's a little bit worse since it's obviously not as far back as it would be in Flounder, but this allows the right side to be much easier to push on, which is the main problem of the map. You have to move really far through a one-way drop, which will also feature a sponge to make that a little bit better, only to rush the enemy stack from low ground. With this being added, it'll now be easier to push on both sides of the map. The rail from tower control will be added there on all times because it's just cool, and I added an extra rail on the left side to make going all the way around in your spawn area more useful. It's still a bit of a situational flank since it doesn't put you in the greatest position and takes a long time to get there, but it's better than not being there at all. Finally, for Rainmaker, the spawn area was just extended to be a bit easier. The right tunnel is still there, though it's a lot harder to get there, so I think it evens it out a bit. And 
and it's also worth noting, of course, that entire area is sitting in a rainmaker-free zone to avoid stalling. Wahoo World's an interesting one, because not only did we want to make the stage better, but we also wanted to keep its gimmick intact in a way that does not make the stage obnoxious to play on, blocking off the main way into mid. So, introducing the new and improved Wahoo World. Funny enough, most of the inspiration from this came from the Salmon Run Big Run layout, of all things. Mainly the right side having a block to climb instead of having to use the rail, and the left side having a way to climb up further. The bottom right half circle was also extended just a bit to the right and added cover to make it easier to retake and for attackers to hold. You may also have realized the left side now has the building interval with a table on the inside for cover. The glass walls and roof in the building will still be there, you'll just now be able to access it when coming from spawn, and it will be a one-way drop going to the flank. Though the high ground here was extended so you can actually jump into the building from here. This would provide an interesting bit of cover while also keeping the flankers visible, as well as being a unique place for fights to occur. The rail will also still be there, but it will be moved to allow you to jump to the left side, meaning if you're defending from the right, you can more easily rotate to the left. The biggest change though is in mid. The bridge will no longer open and close and now always be open. Hallelujah. However, the carousel underneath the map will always be spinning. You'll still have the walls to climb up to reach the unequal flanks, but now there'll be arches similar to in Clamblitz, and they'll no longer rotate with the carousel itself, being static and attached to the flanks, with the uninkable on the flanks being slightly reduced to make it easier to approach through. This gives Wahoo an abundance of approach options that we believe will make the stage feel really cool to play on. And now that the main gimmick is just the rotating carousel, it's much more interesting and accessible in more modes than just a few. We'll start off with Humpback Pump Track. A pretty unique stage that doesn't really need all that much to become good, due to its pretty open layout with interesting curved terrain. There's a lot of things that could change though, but the two biggest issues of Humpback are its incessant overuse of one-way drops and really tight choke points in its moving objective modes, particularly in Rainmaker that devolves a match into a bomb and special spam stall fest whenever the objective reaches these places. FUN! First up, this ramp will be present in all modes, along with this uninkable block to the right from Clams. Both of these routes will not only allow defenders to be able to back away freely and approach more easily, but attackers to reach these areas as well. To compensate for this, there will now be two defensive sponges to allow defenders to go back to their own base. These would prove particularly useful when trying to defend in modes like Rainmaker, as this entire high ground has now been extended to where this building used to be, along with massive widening extensions to the two choke points. The one to the right is a bit wider with a bumper now as cover, but the main area to the left has now been completely overhauled, now with new low ground and a block to fight around. The changes to these areas will of course help in all modes, but it targets Rainmaker specifically, since these choke points as they are currently kind of ruin how the map flows. Turning them into more in-depth areas that are a bit easier to fight in and defend in would make the stage feel a lot more amazing for all players, instead of being too focused on bomb or special spamming. Also, I wanted to remove this entire blockade from the sides in all modes besides obviously Rainmaker, which still needs them, as it would open up the stage much more, kind of like its turf war layout. In fact, in fact, these sides being freely open is a huge contributor to why Humpback is the only map in the game that I can say the Turf War is the best mode in. For Rainmaker, the checkpoint jump now leads into a wider area, with cover to make it a better route. For tower control, the path has been completely adjusted to avoid the trench and instead go through here slightly outside of it, which would feel much better for both teams. After that, it will then move up into the cubby, similar to its Splatoon 2 route, where instead of ending there, it will now lead to the third check, before rising closer to spawn towards the goal right here. And finally for Clams, the basket was in desperate need of moving somewhere a bit more defender favored, so here is where it would go. Now it would take a little bit more effort to push. All of these changes come together to make the map feel much better, less stally, and more open. Oh, Umami, what happened to you? You used to look so cool back then. Umami has a very linear path to spawn with a nauseatingly low amount of positions defenders can take. Once attackers reach this area along with this pillar, there's almost no way for defenders to realistically do anything with the lack of any meaningful high ground, making this one of the most snowbally maps in the game. Now that's what I would have said if the stage didn't get this shadow mega rework that honestly made it pretty dang good and even more visually appealing. It still suffers from snowball issues in the moving objective but I'd be lying if I said it wasn't majorly improved in every way. And man, that is a breath of fresh air to be able to say about this game. This rework was created before the official one and was heavily inspired by the original direct version. However, many aspects, of course, of the official one were also added after. Starting in mid, the middle structure is now going to be paintable on all sides, like in the version we saw in the Splatoon 3 Direct. 
but now retaining the uninkable steps from the current one since they're interesting and allow for some peeking with unique cover for certain weapons. The buildings from that direct version were also added to the sides, which act as a new high ground that could be accessed by this grade, or from the opponent's ink rail, which was adjusted to aim up here. Leading between these buildings and the pillar is a new low ground route, which goes under the grate and acts as a second route in and out of mid, along with another way to approach backlines here. Over on the left, this high ground, if you can even call it that, was made much bigger and actually inkable, again, like the direct version. With a new low ground route around it adding, you guessed it, another route in and out of mid. Back up to the right spot, the entire defensive grating was completely extended and replaced by an inkable wooden plank terrain, again, like the beta version of the stage which would make taking back the pillar much easier, along with obviously being a good defensive spot from the new low ground. This uninkable tarp was also extended along with it as a safety net. Last but not least, you'll notice this completely overhauled left side low ground, which I really wanted to make much more useful as a pushing option. I always thought Umami's area out of spawn kind of reminded me of Camp Triggerfishes, which had these really interesting pillars in his beta version that I wanted to repurpose as Egyptian pillars. These not only act as cover, but platforms to jump to and from, adding two branch routes from below. One allows for a quick jump to this old graded path, and the other brings you to this platform that could be used to poke spawn. This pillar, however, is blocked off from being climbed, and instead is useful for defenders to shoot from as an extension to this newly added left side high ground. The only two objective changes here were to Rainmaker and Clamblitz. Rainmaker will now actually have a second checkpoint, with the first one being moved a little bit further up where this block usually is, and the new one being added to the low ground replacing a pillar. The goal was also moved a bit further up and closer to the left side, basically allowing there to be two solid roots. And in clams, the basket was moved a bit further back to compensate for this new flank, along with this whole left flank actually being useful now. If this was Umami normally, I would play it. Ship shape like Crab Lake is almost there to being an actual good stage, but it's just held back from very small yet impactful issues that greatly reduce its enjoyability factor. I think the most apparent issue is the entire lack of a left side, especially in zones where this grate isn't even accessible. The only way to approach mid is either directly through it or from your right side, which is honestly a great area with almost every wall being paintable, but because that's the only way, it falls into the Splatoon 3 flounder problem where fights devolve into a hallway battle or bomb spam towards backline sitting here. First up the left side, which I should probably just say sides, considering it connects all the way around now. In this new area, there's a defensive sponge in the corner, a balloon for cover, and this ramp which allows a vulnerable jump to and from the main area. This whole side of the wall will still be uninkable, along with a bit of it around here, but with the ability to navigate completely around mid from both the left and right, along with this block to the grate being present in all modes, we've basically already fixed the map's biggest issues. Ship shape will keep its main gimmick, being the tall mid with glass walls underneath, but now in all modes, since it's really interesting terrain that's sadly only trapped in zones and turf war. It will also keep its similar dual ramp structure closer to spawn, which is oddly only in turf war for some reason. Like, seriously, this part is needed a bit more since this map is pretty lockout heavy, so I'm not even sure why I got taken out. Finally, this bridge to the right will as well be present in all modes. However, the middle platform will now be a bit higher to act as cover, giving shorter range weapons an actual chance to contest backlines instead of it just being a big straightaway. And the cool terrain that allows you to access it from the low ground previously only in Rainmaker will also be present. The Rainmaker pedestals were the only objective in any real need of change, so they were tweaked a bit to be a bit more equal. Now the left one has been brought a bit closer while it will now reside on the bridge instead of requiring it to cross. This even makes the pillar thing a little bit more useful, and the goal was brought over a small spit to the left as well to compensate. Again, ship shape isn't really that bad of a map, at least for Splatoon 3 standards, but a few more adjustments and ways to move to the left make it feel way better. Marlin Airport is an interesting stage because it's the first in this game to actually try and incorporate a gimmick mechanic into it. You could argue it's a lazy attempt considering it's just a copy of Anchovy's fans, but personally, I think it does it better in many ways since you actually use the fans more than once every, what, three matches? And the opponents can actually access and use them pretty easily too. This map is actually pretty dang good, with a ton of movement options in mid. It's just that its biggest fault is how this fan is the only way in or out of mid, leading to a really cramped and stally area that's hard to fight in. That on top of how the fan isn't even accessible until the checkpoint is broken in Rainmaker leads to a really terrible feeling entrance to mid. Just an example of how one small thing can make a good map bad.
Mid is basically the same, but if you turn your attention to the main propellers, they've been extended to align with the grate and also be paintable on every side. This also allows for a new angle to approach the enemy side, as well as adding the fan from Rainmaker and Clan Blitz to all modes. Speaking of those fans, the sides have had an extension to allow better access to them, stretching way further over here to a new paintable wall, leading to this new chunk of land that gives a safer flanking angle to the fan, rather than needing to pass straight through drop. This fan had to shrink a bit though to compensate. Sorry. Once out of mid, you'll notice the ramp from the moving objectives will always be present as well, allowing for more freedom for the attackers instead of just simply trying to funnel past this uninkable ramp. To make up for that, the sponge was moved to the center of the area, acting as better defensive terrain and an easy way back and forth between these platforms. This ground and spawn was extended to make defending easier, and there's also this new anchor that connects to the new terrain, allowing for a quick way to access the left side and rotate fully around mid without dropping. And that's already it for Marlin. You see, that's what happens when the devs decide to actually add a cool map with positive attributes. We don't have to change all that much or complain about how boring and missed potential it is. Which now, we must speak of it! Oh boy! Last but not least is Barnacle and Dime. Far from the worst map in the game, arguably being the most playable of the three Tetris pieces, before they all had a small injection of life during Sizzle Season. But personally, I find it to be the lamest of them all, and dare I use the dramatic word, insulting. insulting. How do you make a stage about a mall and not even attempt to do anything with the theme? Maybe it's just a coconut mall bias, seeing how cool that map is, but still. At launch, this was the most generic, basic layout that featured absolutely no spark of creativity in the slightest. And that's just in the theming. Personally, I can never even understand how anyone can considered it good in a gameplay sense either. Now I know this stage was reworked in the most recent season, and while the inclusion of the low ground and overall layout changes led to this map to actually flow pretty well and be 10 times better than whatever this was, it still stands that nothing about this map makes you feel like you're fighting in a mall. Which is why instead of just fixing the objective gameplay issues with Barnacle, I'm gonna break the mold and completely reimagine this place while still keeping the basic skeleton intact. BOOM! Easter eyes. I know there's a lot and it's very unrealistic, but I'm just letting my creativity fully take over, you know? The first thing you'll notice are the palm trees! There are major low ground expansions to the sides featuring new escalator-esque conveyors. So let's look at them. These sides are obviously massive, not only completely allowing you to avoid mid and flank behind the opponent's stack, but also acting as a full arena to fight it with unique geometry inspired by a mall. It's good to note with how low these areas are, the entirety of the stage has been moved up slightly to compensate, since they'd all be underwater otherwise. For the escalators, which resemble more the conveyors from Mario Kart 8's version of Coconut Mall, green arrows mean they move up and red down. This means that certain ones are more favorable to their respective teams. So for instance, dropping to your left then flanking is much quicker and favorable due to the escalator moving up to your desired destination, as opposed to dropping right and trying to flank to the opponent's spawn, which is still possible, but seeing as the escalator is moving against you, it's slow and punishable. In the low ground, there's another structure similar to the one in mid, with two palm trees and a fancy mall bridge. There's four ways to leave the area, being these three escalators along with this climbable ledge. When riding up this escalator behind the stack, this entire area has been expanded, featuring a giant defender sponge to help in fights against flankers, along with allowing a jump back to your high ground. And further up, this balloon was replaced by another palm tree. Moving closer to spawn, there are also a lot of big changes. First, this block will now be rotated so the fire extinguisher faces towards mid, allowing for the ability to be scoot rolled off of. This cushion staircase will be present in all modes. There's another down moving escalator as an option to approach. And there's a new grate here to allow for movement between these high grounds, along with easier defending against this escalator. Later. The defender high ground was made inaccessible to attackers, with it now connecting all the way to the spawn region and having this sponge for defenders to retreat to it. There's also two more palm trees up here, and the left side of spawn now extends to allow a quick drop to the low ground as a defensive position. And for the two objective changes, Raymaker and Tower. In Tower, the new path will take advantage of this area. Though it was pretty dang hard to figure out a balanced path that also moved through both sides of the map, so I did the best I could. It will start off basically the same, with the first check here and the second one in the same general area. However, instead of going into this awkward, very difficult to defend high ground, it will instead dart right, moving into these new side areas, going up the escalator to where the third check will be found. After that, it goes up the cushion stairs and toward the goal. And last but not least, for Raymaker, a second check was added to the sides, where this escalator will actually be off in the mode, to allow unrestricted movement out of that path. And the goal was moved here, approachable from the sofa chairs, this escalator, or for feeling really spicy, this high ground. 
I'm sure many could argue this new layout is a bit too cluttered or big, but honestly, I'm the most proud of this one and I would really kill to actually be able to play on it. Plus, you know, just adding a left side in general and much more ways to defend and approach would make the map feel just amazing to play on. Like, why can't we have this, man? Santa Maria was a map that people liked initially, but it became clear that it had some Splatoon 2 map design problems. There were linear and very limited routes on the sides, with the block being removed, making flanking pretty limited, and forced mid-fights that you pretty much had to go through. The right side of this map really just sucks. It's a one-way drop, so it's really difficult to go back into, and it doesn't really give you advantageous terrain, and lockouts when the enemy team manages to take control of the bunker or spawn lock you on Rainmaker and Tower Control are really awkward to get out of. The left side of the map also just doesn't really have any actual root, so we're gonna tweak it. This version of Manta has a lot of inspirations from the tricolor layout, which had a lot of interesting ideas. First, the bunker had the back wall removed, allowing for freedom to easily move in or out, along with opening up the area. This defensive sponge was also added in the middle to act as cover. I honestly miss when sponges were allowed to be used more creatively like this, as obstacles instead of ways to just move back. Next, the block to the opponent's snipe will return in all modes, and the entire side of mid was extended to be much wider with this new block as cover, which allows the jump to and from the right side to be possible. With these simple expansions, both sides feel much better to approach and defend from, and it's possible to completely circumnavigate mid. This grate to allow jumps to snipe from the bunker was also added. Another thing plagiarized straight from the tricolor layout. There's now a permanent defensive sponge placed here, which fixes the issue of defenders not being able to get over this wall once attackers make it to this point, which I always thought made the map feel terrible, especially in clan blitz because of how much you had to back up in order to contest flankers. Next up, we need to fix the snowballing issue of spawn. There's now a sponge to easily back up, and the tricolor rail was added in addition to the paintable boat. And for my idea, there is now a second boat added, which adds a a very slow and predictable route, but one at a very nice brand new angle to the left side, allowing both attackers and defenders to be able to go across in a unique angle. I think this is an amazing new route that'll allow you to completely go around mid and also just adds to the unique vibe of the stage. The only anarchy objective that's changed was Rainmaker, which now has a third checkpoint here acting as a breakaway, and this ink rail will also stay in every mode. Next up is Crab Leg Capital. This is an open map with a unique great gimmick, which is kind of similar to Splatoon 1 Hammerhead, but I think done a little bit better. It's nearly a good stage, but outside of Clam Blitz, it has huge one-way drop problems, is super backline favored, and is incredibly difficult to push up on with horrible positions that are dominant for high ground with very limited cover. It's a pretty easy decision to make the Clam Blitz layout a base, which means with that, there's not too much to add, since now we have both the ramp and block in all modes, which is already a huge improvement by itself. However, while this map does have somewhat useful sides, they require pretty heavy dedication and aren't all that safe for more aggro weapons to pressure from because of this vulnerable jump that's required to both approach and retreat depending on the side you're on. However, now the low grounds were extended to connect, giving the option to either use the old jump or safely move around mid and approach from behind. This also makes the area less likely to get you cornered. Both of these defensive grates were extended to have inkable ground to make them more useful. There's also more cover in mid with the addition of these small blocks. And there's a new low ground tunnel on the left side drops here for more aggressive weapons. The rails will also now be present in all modes, while this one goes way further toward the high ground to be used much more aggressively. Once again, only one objective really needs a change, and that's the tower path. The path as it is practically commits every possible sin you can have in tower control, such as moving significantly backwards, having easy to hold checkpoints, and once it makes it here, it feels near impossible to stop the game from snowballing because how do you defend this? The tower will now be in its short variant, allowing it to pass under the grates, which will no longer be absent from the mode. And the path has been made completely different, taking a broader tour around the stage that avoids it going completely backwards and away from the defender's spawn. The first checkpoint is now here to the left, before the tower moves all the way to the right under the grates, which also are no longer made of glass in this mode. Why is it like this? I don't know. Next, it will move back towards the middle and up the ramp leading to the final checkpoint, which leads directly to the goal deeper into spawn. Now it's actually playable, yay! The base clan blitz layout and expanded side routes allow it to shine and be more fair to all weapon classes, allowing you to be able to do a lot more. 
Bluefin is mostly accurate from Splatoon 1 in terms of its main features, and the newly added elevators are cool, but they're kind of slow and predictable, which makes approaching harder, especially since the sidewalls are now only inkable from one predictable side instead of all of them like in the first game. Let's make some changes to fix that and bring it closer to its Splatoon 1 variant. The brick walls in mid were stretched back to their Splatoon 1 proportions to act as better cover, and a second curved ramp thing was mirrored to the other side replacing this block. Plus, these act as better cover as well. Now every wall in mid will be present in all modes, and they will once again be paintable from all sides, making them safer to climb and not as easily camped by anchor weapons. The elevators will now also move at double the speed they currently do, and the wall behind them will be inkable. So if you want, you could completely bypass the elevator by jumping over it and climbing up at your own leisure. I think this is a good way to keep the gimmick, but allow you to have a few more options and make the approach a bit easier. Now, when it comes to the zone, I think the moving zone is one of the coolest things they've added to the map in this game, and is pretty unique. However, it is really annoying when the zone is all the way across on one side since it makes moving between the two sides a little bit harder. So now the bridge that is there in all the other modes will still be present in zones, and it'll just be under the zone so you can cross it even when it's moved. Another change is the walls will rise up much earlier when the zone is moving back and forth, instead of waiting for the zone to completely reach the other side. That way there'll be a bit more cover a bit sooner when trying to move across it. From my casual perspective, my biggest gripe with Bluefin is how the spawn area, unlike mid, was completely remodeled with absolutely no resemblance in the slightest to original. Yeah, it of course plays better than this cramped mess, but there's no denying the original had a super charming identity that was completely lost here. So I tried my best to adapt the coolest and most iconic parts of Splatoon 1 spawn into the S3 version, in order to keep its spirit alive. While this awkward wall jump wall was kinda cool for some weapon classes, we opted to remove and replace it with the old Splatoon 1 ramp because it allows for a bit more freedom of movement and a bit more speed. The block for that wall jump will be turned back into a unique box structure similar to original Bluefin, which in some modes will allow a jump. We also see the return of both great paths from the original, with the left one now gaining an inkable checkpoint of sorts to make it less vulnerable, and the right one now acting as a ramp to the low ground akin to the left one. These greats are now able to work, since they're still vulnerable and predictable, but now they aren't the only ways to approach, with this ramp still existing being the primary way. Finally, spawn was moved to be a bit more to the center while still clearly being tilted to the right side, and it takes a little bit more cues from Splatoon 1 with its shape, having two perches to the side along with the original staircase connected to the grate. Now having ground underneath it instead of just random places to fall. For the anarchy objectives, Clams and Tower had changes. For Clams, the basket was simply moved a bit more into the center, which mixed with the abundance of new ways to approach here would make the mode flow amazingly now. As for Tower, the path was completely revamped to mimic Splatoon 1's more interesting and natural route while still keeping the tall tower. Now instead of going straight left, it will go slightly to the right for the first checkpoint sitting under the ramp, then it will rise out of mid next to the elevator, which is a much more contestable and natural area to fight in, and with the second checkpoint placed before the ramp passing over it will now lead to the left side, where we'll move toward checkpoint 3, and then up the final ramp to the goal. Next up is Robo Ramen, which is easily the best map in the game that doesn't really need much changes. The main thing is just combining attributes from a few other modes together, along with some small tweaks. The uninkable block to approach on the right side of spawn, the inkrell on the low ground, and the greets from Rainmaker and Clan Bloods are all added to this layout while keeping the top right spawn extension from zones. And lastly, just to improve the areas a bit and make them less stally, both main chokes were made a bit wider and less cramped, with the bumpers moved a bit to accommodate the extension and allow movement around them from either side. And the only objective change was tower, which will be a little bit more dynamic. Of course, the layout will no longer completely change with the graded bridge, so the first check will now be much earlier before the high ground. After that, it will swiftly move through here and then drop to the right, leading to the second checkpoint. After that, instead of the goal being basically here, it will now lead past and toward the third check, finally rising back out of the low ground toward the goal. That's pretty much it. This map doesn't need much work, and things like the block just adding a few more routes and allowing one more way into the enemy base, along with the rail and grates being added, just make it a lot more interesting. Our final map of the day is the final map in the series, Lemuria Hub. I found this to be a really interesting and unique stage to play on that kept the rotational symmetry gimmick that we've had from Splatoon 1 Salisbury Rig or Splatoon 2 Skipper Pavilion. However, I think the map feels a little bit constricted. The top of the map has a lot of uninkable walls that feel difficult to move in, and the bottom of the stage feels a little bit limited. So this is the rework. The main change is at the very bottom of the map. This platform will now attach to either side of the base, allowing you to traverse across Cross it depending on where the platform is, always being able to go across from one side to the other, adding a new approach option. To make up for this new movement option, spawn was widened more inward to allow for defenders to better hold the area. 
Jumping to the middle of the stage, these walls in turf and tower that restricted your movement will be taken down, with the defensive sponge moved here, giving many more options especially for defenders. The rail from Clan Blitz will be there consistently now, along with making this block a bit taller, allowing jumps to the bridge. And most importantly, all of the walls on the top of the map that are uninkable will be changed to be inkable, allowing players to go in and outside of the bowl a lot more easily, even climbing the sides of the bridge in mid, just like you could with the reef. And finally, the platform will no longer carry the Rainmaker. That's really the only things I think the stage needs. It might sound like a lot, but I think the stage layout is mostly good, it just needs to allow you to move across it more easily. The idea is definitely there, and I think this is a much better version.